my great honor to invite our next guest, the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Mrs. Melinda Gates. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I think all of us are in this room uh, and here this week at the United Nations because we have one dream, and that's the dream to have an equitable world. And if we're going to have an equitable world, you have to include everybody. And that means you have to talk about some topics that maybe we don't always talk about. And one of those is money. And if you will indulge me for just a second in my own story, I will get to the point of why I'm here. I grew up in the south of the United States where talking about money was considered crass. We didn't do that publicly. We use euphemisms like financial services or economies. But I also grew up in a household uh, where my father and my mother believed in empowering both the two girls in the family, which is my sister and me, and the two boys in our family. My dad made sure very early on, my sister and I were the oldest, that we got bank accounts and we learned how to use them and that we got savings accounts. But it was my mom who took my sister and me, and eventually my brothers, every three weeks to the bank to put our little bit of savings into the bank, the little we'd save from our allowances or the odd jobs we could get in the neighborhood, or eventually real jobs that we had where we were getting money over the summers. So my mother taught me what it meant to go to the bank and to keep your checking account and to save money. My parents made sure with my first job that the very first paycheck I got went into my savings account. Why do I bring this up? Because when I went to college, I studied computer science and economics. Then I went straight to business school. And the most powerful classes I were in was in were the finance classes. And everywhere I went, the men talked about money. We talked about money, money, money. And if we're going to create an equitable world, I've come to see that we have to include everybody. And that means we need to include women, and we need to include marginalized people, and we need to include the poor. And money is power. And if we want to empower people, we have to make sure that they have means for savings. And that's where Queen Maxima comes into my story. She's been working on development longer than I have. When I started to learn about these issues, certainly inside and outside the foundation about financial inclusion, I went to my first meeting with Queen Maxima, and I didn't know what to expect, quite honestly. And I got schooled in why financial services were important. And these days, when I am lucky enough to go call on a president or prime minister of a country to talk about digital financial services and the importance of having women and poor, the poor save into their own bank accounts, they'll say to me, oh, oh, oh. I'm totally on board, and guess what? Queen Maxima has already been here to talk to me about that issue. And I'm like, great, we are in good steed here. She has tirelessly traveled the globe. She could have stayed home. It would have been easier. She wouldn't have put so many miles on her suitcases or on that airline flight. But she talks to government bodies, decision-making bodies, regula regulators. She talks to businesses. She talks to the non-governmental sector about why making sure we have financial services that include everybody are important. One of the things that I think when we talk about digital financial services, when I look back a decade ago, we didn't have that tool. We didn't have a phone to talk about, could you go in and make sure that a woman or a man could save a dollar a day, two dollars a day. We know that in many places in the world, the poor, and even in my own country, aren't welcomed at the bank. And yet they save. They save, they'll show you, by putting it under the mattress or in a tin can or in, in, a, piece, in a livestock or a piece of jewelry so that when the school fees are due, they can sell that asset or collect that asset and pay for the school fees or the health shock. So we have this tool that if we get it right, if we make sure that people have digital IDs, if we make sure that we get the regulations right and the policies right, if we have the right regulatory systems, if we know that governments act in the right way and can create a competitive environment for digital financial services, we will bring down the price so it only costs a few cents to save or borrow money. 
and that will make a huge difference in the lives of the poor. And so what I'm here to say is that if we want to create an equitable and just society, we need to empower everyone and bring them into the digital financial services. And my thanks to Queen Maxima for tirelessly championing this issue and making sure that it's about everyone, not just a few. Thank you. Thank you very much.